Good morning, good morning. All right, Coffee Chronicles with Coop, episode three. Uh, it's a new week, new thoughts, stuff to share, keep it short, hopefully set you guys up for a good week and some valuable insight, maybe something that makes you change some actions this week. So uh, my thoughts this morning are basically evolved around you know, how I'm spending my time and being the most efficient with my time and and productive with my time. And this is kind of derailed into a couple different thoughts. But but first, I'll I'll put it this way. Um, For most of us in today's day and age, social media consumes too much of our lives. That's no question. Um, And I'm no different. I've been guilty of... uh, mindlessly scrolling whether that be face facebook or instagram or whatever the the platform is um and, and kind of going through that and me and you know me and kyler talk about this type of stuff about we need to be better um we know we need to be better but it's easier said than done sometimes but in that same breath uh here i am making a video that's posted to social media that i think is beneficial for my members i think it's beneficial for my brand and my business and it's not like just deleting everything and and going dark is a value either to some degree now what got me on this thought right is obviously that whole that whole that whole thought process of hey i'm, I'm doing this too much I'm, I'm wasting time this is not efficient this is not the best way to do this so then it led me down the track of thinking about Okay, we can't eliminate it altogether, but what if I control and am more filtered on what I am seeing and what I'm thinking about? So kind of what I'm surrounding myself with in some in some capacity, right? I think at some point, yeah, I'm going to be on social media. At some point, there's a time and a place to scroll it we'll say but unfortunately that more often than not what i am seeing and what most people are seeing on their feed is really not of value it doesn't really add value to my life it doesn't really add value or benefit to my business um it doesn't really do anything it's just kind of like random and i would argue that most people are that way um because the way the you know the way it sucks us into it and the way you follow people and the content people post so what i'm going to do is i'm going to really take take a second and filter through the people i'm following on these platforms and i i'm going to ask myself a few questions first off are they a family member because if they are i value what they're posting i want to see what's going on in their lives because i don't get to connect with my family as much especially if they don't live here, if they don't live, um, you know, locally. And even then sometimes it's nice to see what your family members are doing. Are they really a good friend of mine? So someone I either have actually personally met, have spent time with, went to college or school with, you know, um, and somehow I I still care about what they're doing in their life because I care about them. Um, And the next one would be, you know, Sure, there's people that I want to follow that I have I don't have a personal connection with or I don't know. But then I can ask myself, do they are what they are posting is what they're posting actually adding value to my life? Is it something that I actually truly think is valuable? Um, whether that be something professionally to help me in my business, whether that be something that motivates me, um, whether that be something that um is related to my life and I think helps maybe my creativity um, or something like that, right? So, because there are a handful of people I follow when I think about it right now that they don't fit any of those. And the less of them in my feed, the better. I'll get back to tying this all together because I do think that's valuable for everybody. But I think about the times that I've been my best in training and it's when I've surrounded myself with those who make me better, right? And I want to do the same thing via social media. 
I want to surround myself with people that make me better. Um, people that I love, people that I care about, and then people that make me better is who I want to see on those platforms. And the same thing goes for training. Um, I, I've talked about this before, not on this, but just to people in general, you know, one of the most beneficial things about like a college weight room and training with your teammates is yeah, sure. The, the program is good, right? You know, the intent is there. Everyone wants to be a better sport athlete, football player, whatever it is the sport is, but your teammates and the way they push you to really like push the, your intensity level. That is to me where you find, you find the biggest benefit right? Is because you're amongst peers pushing you to your limits that genuinely care about you getting better because they know you're a teammate and they want to see you succeed. They want to push you to get better. I hands down had some of the biggest progress in my athletic or fitness career in college because of that exact reason. Um, not only did they push me actually like, Hey, you know, like motivating me, yelling at me or whatever, spotting me, but at the same time, I aspired to be them or better than them, or I was competing with them and myself, right? And then to bring it back to CrossFit is that is one of the most undervalued pieces of CrossFit. And people say, oh, you know, it's not all about competing against others. I'm not saying that it is about competing with others. But what I'm saying is when you surround yourself with people that have the same goals or maybe even higher goals than you, you are going to aspire to be better than you are currently now. Um, you can have two completely different goals, but if you're in the same room with somebody who's getting after it, pushing themselves and is really, you know, training hard, you're going to probably train harder. You're probably going to push yourself a little bit harder, right? If you're in a room surrounded with people that actually give a shit about what they eat, what they put in their body, um, you're going to probably start to eat a little bit better care about what you put in your body a little bit more, right? It's just, it's, it's really, really simple. If you break it down like that, I mean, how many times have you been, maybe if you're someone that's already into health and fitness, you've been the one person in the room that's maybe not as into drinking, right? You go to a gathering with friends or family or whatever, and everyone's drinking. And all of a sudden you feel like kind of the, the odd man out because you're maybe having one beer versus like six or seven beers, or you choose not to drink at all. Or you choose to not go for an extra piece of dessert or whatever. So you feel like that amount out. If you were in a group of people that that was the norm, right? It wouldn't feel like you're the odd man out at all. And it, in fact, it would make you, it push you to be better than you are now. So it might not be normal, but um, we don't want to surround ourselves with normal people. At least I don't. I want to surround myself with people that are going to push me to be better than I am that currently have maybe uh six, you know, some a business I'm aspiring to to imitate or some something that is going to truly make me better than I am now. Um so, you know, I think the other thing I think about with this is we've had people leave CrossFit or quit CrossFit or or whatever, which is normal. It's going to happen. I, I mean, Anyone can do CrossFit, but it's not necessarily for everybody in some capacity. But I, I, I think the one thing that people that sometimes leave that they forget about is the community part. And I, yes, I'm talking community part as again, like, yeah, I'm friends with so-and-so. We work out together, blah, blah, blah. But the fact of, hey, you're going to this class. There's eight or more people in this class. They are pushing themselves every single day. You start putting yourself in that environment on a daily basis, you're going to be better. You're going to be better for it. You're going to aspire to be more. Um, and as much as it sucks to say, you probably don't get that same feeling or that same stimulus by yourself. Anyone can buy a rogue barbell. Anyone can buy a rogue squat rack. Anyone can buy this stuff and put it in their garage and train. And you can. You can do a really good job with it. I'm not knocking a garage gym at all. Right? I have some stuff at home myself. I mean, I trained in my garage through COVID when we had to close down the gym for six weeks and I trained every morning in there alone or with one other person and it was cold and it was dark and it was hard, 
way harder than it is to come out and work out with buddies, work out with people. Um, even if I don't, you don't have to be best friends to be good training partners. So anyway, that's kind of topic of the week is kind of control your surroundings. Think about what's what environment you're putting yourself in. Are you putting yourself in an environment with people that are going to help you succeed, people that are going to push you to be better, um, and then also kind of that external environment that's not real, the social media environment. Are you creating a social media environment that is pushing you to be better? Are you listening to podcasts that are going to make you better? Are you listening to videos that are going to make you better? Are you following people, these influencers that are going to actually make you better? Um, and having that honest conversation about it, because I do think it plays a bigger role in our lives than we necessarily want it to. But that's one way you can kind of control it. That's how I'm going to try to do it. So anyway, have a good week. Get after it. We'll catch you next week.